This is the video, How It All Ends menu, in which I give you a list of all of the topics, objections, and questions, and then tell you uh, which of the expansion pack videos you can go to to see where that's addressed. Cross-references are in parentheses. For instance, in the first video, Nature of Science, the topic, What Peer Reviewed Means and Why It's So Important, also is addressed in risk management in a slightly different way. So if you like a topic, you can go see different ways that it's mentioned in different videos. Also, Nature of Science, telling the difference between causation and correlation. Objections answered include, why should we trust the scientists? Why don't we just go with the facts, just look at the evidence? Why should we listen to scientists now if they've been wrong before? Scientists can't even predict the weather, so why should we listen to them about something even bigger, like the climate? There is no consensus among scientists on global warming. Climate models are just models. They're just predictions about the future, so they're just conjecture and therefore useless. Risk management topics. How do you go about making a decision when faced with uncertainty? How do you decide who to believe and who not to? What tricks can we learn from casinos and insurance companies? What peer-reviewed means and why it's so important? Details from the AAAS and NAS statements. Details from the industries calling for mandatory emissions caps on themselves, the U.S. Carbon Action Partnership, or U.S. CAP. How the warnings of harm to the economy are a Jedi mind trick. Objections. That grid is just Pascal's wager. There's little argument to the, on the existence of global warming, but there's still lots on the causes. What about the Copenhagen Consensus, the Leipzig Declaration, the Oregon Petition? Stop telling you what to think. That grid is so grossly oversimplified that it's useless. I noticed that you dropped the global depression that was in the upper left box in the original grid in the most terrifying video. Couldn't take the heat, huh? So you had to bias the grid your way? You underplayed the negative consequences in the upper left. You overplayed the negative consequences in the lower right. Well, we can't just surrender control of our future to a bunch of eggheads that we don't know and never elected. But that's just a prediction. That doesn't mean it's really going to happen. That's just argument from authority. There are at least three documentaries on YouTube alone disproving AGW. If action on climate change is such a good deal, how come businesses aren't doing it yet? I think we'll innovate ourselves out of any problem. Whatever negative economic consequences show up in the upper left should show up in the lower left too. So if we choose action, we're doomed to economic harm. The upper right corner is the only box that looks attractive. That's why we should choose column B. I'd rather not take action on an uncertain threat so that we can face any real threats that do materialize down the road with the wealth that an unfettered economy would bring us. The statements from AAAS and NAS shouldn't be taken as any big deal because the scientists are biased. Their grant money depends on them crying wolf. The grid is useless without actual numbers assigned to the probabilities. 100 years of data is not enough to know thousands of years of the past climate. The IPCC is just a UN hack. They have no credibility. Why is there still debate topics? A little bit of the psychology and sociology of why we're still talking about this in the face of very clear and explicit scientific agreement. Why scare tactics, why scare tactics can sometimes be a good thing. Smackdown, an inconvenient truth versus the great global warming swindle. Why we'd be better off if case X were the cause of global climate change. Objections, but I've heard the opposite of all that you say about climate change, so doesn't that prove it's still being debated? The mechanics of climate change topics, the basics, greenhouse effect versus global warming versus global climate change, and some of the swindles from the great global from the great global warming swindle. Objections. CO2 is an insignificant greenhouse gas compared to methane and water vapor. There's little argument on the existence of global warming, but there's still lots on its causes. If we take action and climate change doesn't happen, how will we know whether it was ever true in the first place? How arrogant to think that we can, have, that we can change the globe. We're too small to have any effect. The water vapor from hydrogen fuel cell cars would just replace the CO2 as a greenhouse gas. Humans are not causing global warming. Climate changes all the time. We're coming out of a cold cycle, so this is natural. Scare tactics topics include the big threat, abrupt climate change. The military's assessment of, of abrupt climate change as a threat to national security. Why this problem is the only issue that matters, save one, which I'll leave as an exercise for the viewer. Why I like clear cuts and nuclear power now. Why we'd be better off if gay sex were the cause of global climate change. Objections. The picture you paint is unlikely to happen. How could it be so bad? What's the explanation for the disaster scenarios on the Red Bull cans? How do we get epidemics and wars from climate change? What's wrong with a degree or two, and how is that flip like flipping a light switch? We can't even predict the weather tomorrow, so why are we making predictions tw about 20 years from now? Climate has always changed, so why are we suddenly the bad guys? It's the sun, stupid, or cosmic rays. I've heard predictions of temperature drops. How does that come from global warming? Why get all wound up about the climate changing? Who's to say what the right climate is? Birds and bees build nests and homes out of raw materials in their environment, just like we do. How is this different? If there were no beavers, there wouldn't be any beaver dams disrupting the natural course of a river. Is that good or bad or just the way it is? The climate has done fine before without us, but it's been warm in the past. Where's the evidence that that's bad? Why should we, America that is, change? It won't make any difference unless China and India are stopped. But CO2 lags temperature in the ice core data, so those silly scientists have got it all backwards. Humans are too small to have an effect on the climate. You're indulging in irresponsible scaremongering. Someone actually flagged my video on YouTube asking that it be removed for scaremong for uh, fear-mongering. Fear the solution topics include how, do you, how to do more than just pass it on, understanding the technical and policy solutions, applying the test of future regrets, 
How are we supposed to fix this without going back to the Dark Ages? How you might be able to be part of history. Probably won't get any monuments, but it'll make a great story for the grandkids. Objections. So what exactly is this action you've been whining about? Specifics, please. So what do we do about it? What do I do about it? Biodiesel is bad because it displaces food crops. Wind turbines kill birds, you know. If man has changed the climate, then what is it supposed to be now? Until we have a clue what the norm is, how do we know how much to, we need to adjust what we're doing? What if taking actions makes it worse, or we overshoot and cause an ice age? Leave the government out of this. The free market can handle the problem. How much action is enough? Exactly what needs to get done? I'm too busy to deal with climate change, and the problem is too big. Get what you want, the first one in the skeptics bonus pack, topics. How taking action on climate change is actually a better bet for getting skeptics what they want, economic and political liberty. If your objections to the argument, sure, there's uncertainty, but why not take action just in case, is along the lines of, we need to protect the economy, or I don't want the government getting more control of my life. If you want to see me put an economist and a scientist in a jar and shake it to see him fight, not really, but sort of. Why you shouldn't confuse Al Gore with global climate change. Why I put global depression in the upper left box in my original The Most Terrifying Video You'll Ever See, but dropped it in How It All Ends. Even more details from the US CAP statement. Objections. You're an alarmist. What's your motivation, Mr. Do-Gooder? My personal economy, for better or worse, ends at my property line. You underplayed the negative economic consequences in the upper left. I'd rather not take action on an uncertain threat so that if we face any real threats that do materialize down the road with the wealth that an unfettered economy would bring us. Science ain't so hot. Remember when the eggheads were all certain in the 1970s that the globe was going into an ice age that never materialized? They're always screaming some chicken little story, so why should we listen now? Global warming is a ploy for the elites to grow the government and take away our freedoms. I hope I'm wrong. Number two in the Skeptics Bonus Pack. Topics. The details of how I've tried to be, co be conscientious and unbiased in my analysis of this. Why being terrified of climate change has actually mellowed me out in some aspects. If you want to see a picture of me without my shirt on, don't worry, there's a warning before the image so you can skip that part. For the story of a very unexpected and very violent explosion in my classroom. Why I'd be okay with us taking big action on climate change but turning out to be wrong about it, even if the results are economic harm. Objections. You're clearly biased, so why should I listen to anything you have to say? No holds barred. Skeptics bonus pack number three. The final stand in the debate with hardline skeptics. You might want to watch this video if you feel like you're not getting anywhere in your argument with warmers. You're tired of being told you're the problem. You want to call me an alarmist. You've ever been called a conspiracy theorist about this. You want to hear me get sassy. You claim that the AAAS and NAS statements aren't credible because the scientists are biased. Their grant money depends on them crying wolf. You subscribe to Michael Crichton's hypothesis that the threat of global climate change is mostly a conspiracy by scientists. You think that the truth is that reasonable people of goodwill can look at the same evidence and come to opposite conclusions, including scientists. Your objection has any mention of asteroids. You think everything that the government touches turns to crap, so we should just let the free market solve the problem. You think we should pick column B because it contains the only box that seems attractive. You wonder why I would think the website How to Talk to a Climate Skeptic is actually a better resource for skeptics than for warmers. You think there's no way anyone could ever show you that you actually like government. Your objection to action is along the lines of, but people need to trust that the money spent to stop climate change will be spent effectively and honestly. You think that I'm delusional and cannot even in principle be convinced that AGW is bunk. You think choosing column A dooms us to economic harm, regardless of the truth of global warming. You think global warming is a ploy for the elites to grow the government and take away your freedoms. God's will. If it seems like global climate change is just God's will and therefore out of your control, or that taking action to combat it would actually be contrary to God's will. The Manpower Project topics. If the grid in How It All Ends was the height of simplicity and risk management was the next step up in complexity, this is the final installment of complexity. There's no for simplicity's sake here. Objections. Your grid is oversimplified. What about the intermediates between no action and all out action? What if climate change is happening, but we're not the ones doing it? What if climate change is happening and we're the ones doing it, but our actions don't stop it or they make it worse? The consequences in each box themselves aren't certain. There should be a range of possible consequences in each box, not just a worst case scenario. Don't we need more columns and rows to account for all of those possibilities? That grid is useless without actual numbers. You bias the grid by putting only economic consequences in the upper left, but economic plus a bunch more in the lower right. Choosing column A dooms us to economic harm, regardless of the truth of global warming. <sighs> Go wild.